back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching KUTV Kenya. The show is Art and Culture Monday, and you're with me, Karen Blessing. And I am not alone. I am joined by experts. I think that's the word, because they, they have so many, they have so many titles in their bag, but they will be telling us all about them, but we are talking all matters mental health, and we are here to listen in. So if you can grab your notebook, grab your notepad on your phone, you are going to be learning a theme or two today. All right? So karibuni sana, karibuni to the second launch of the day, and keep your questions coming okay talk to me on um KUTV Kenya we are streaming live on YouTube as KUTV Kenya and also on our SMS and WhatsApp line 0739110544 and I'm going to be getting to those comments as we head to the end of the interview but right about now Karibuni Sana how are you guys doing how are you ladies doing this morning very fine, thank you're, you. You're doing very fine. Very I think fine. I think we start we start from Dr. Beatrice um, this morning. Mm -hmm. um, how are you doing? I'm well, very well and happy. You can see I'm wearing a green ribbon. Yes, this is the Mental <laughs> Health Awareness Month. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for reminding us mm -hmm. of that. We have been mm -hmm. having those conversations around mental health, mm -hmm. and we are happy to actually listen in from people who are experts in this field mm -hmm. because you know we can come back here talk with our fellow peers mm -hmm. talk about the way it's affecting us but mm -hmm. it, it gives quite an insight to hear from professionals mm -hmm. so dr beatrice is monday morning usually your cup of tea Emma, you have struggled <laughs> this morning to, to wake up i was actually telling my colleague yeah that uh, i'm a night owl yes so you get, can guess that the morning isn't yes, the that's best. The morning is, and and the Friday is better than the Monday than for the me. Monday. True. Absolutely, of course. But then again, we have to fit in. Exactly. Absolutely. So we are grateful for mm. that reason. Mm. We are even more grateful that you made time to be here. Mm -hmm. Um and Karibu sana. Thank Welcome. You. We are ready to have to listen to you to just um get to learn mm. from you, Doctor Ongeta. How are you doing this morning? Very fine, thanks. Blessing. You are good as well? Very good. Are you a night owl like Dr. Beatrice? Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes people wonder whether it's a trait. Yes. Yeah, but I'm a night owl as well. Yes. So, uh -huh. mm, by 6.30 yes. in KUTV. It, it was a bit of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mean, we, but we are flexible. Yes. Yeah. So, the mind can be changed exactly. and that happens even with substance use yes the mind can be changed the mind can be changed yes. okay we are mm -hmm. I, I feel like we are with the best people to have mm -hmm. this conversation i'd like just you to say hi to our audience this morning mm -hmm. tell us what you do why you are here where, um, what where you work as part of kenyatta university before we jump into our conversation of the day Thank you, Blessing. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons why I am opening up about being a night owl yeah. is because mental health is about self-awareness. Yes. Because then when you're self-aware, mm -hmm. you know your strengths, you know your vulnerabilities, yes. and you know how to tap on your strengths mm -hmm. and how to minimize the impact of your vulnerabilities. Yes. So my name is Dr. Beatrice Kathongo. I work in Kenyatta University in the Department of Psychology. I am a counseling psychologist by profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, people sometimes ask, what is the difference between psychology and psychiatry? Yes. And my colleague will be saying she's a psychiatrist. Yes. So I might as well say a little, a little about, about psychology. A psychologist. So psychology uh -huh. is a science that tries to describe mm -hmm. and understand behavior. Mm -hmm. It tries to explain behavior and look at factors that influence behavior. Yes. It tries to look at factors that shape behavior mm -hmm. and how we can predict behavior mm -hmm. and therefore be able to um, you know, put in some control measures. Yes. So we get what we want uh -huh. and not what we do not want. Yes. Now, in the course of that, uh -huh. psychology therefore deals with both normal or mm -hmm. functional behavior, mm -hmm. but also goes into the realm of what we call abnormal behavior. Yes. And it uh -huh. is in that space of abnormal behavior mm -hmm. that we then meet the psychiatrist uh -huh. who's coming from medicine yes. and dealing with medical conditions, yes. including medical conditions that are of a mental nature. Yes. So that is where we meet somewhere, uh, yes. but they go to the medicine side and yes. we go to the to normal the psychology side. So part of what we do in psychology yes is what we call positive psychology. What can we do to build in factors that bring in individual growth, mm -hmm. group growth, mm -hmm. you know, community growth, yes. national growth, yes. as opposed to waiting for people to be to sick exactly. and then we intervene. Yes. So that is what psychology in essence is about. So uh -huh. I am a counseling psychologist. Uh -huh. I, I am a lecturer in the Department of Psychology of mm -hmm. Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, I've also done a specialization in addiction science studies. Uh, yes. And that is what brings us close to this theme of this year. Yes. Because we are looking at mental illness and substance use disorders yes. and the correlation and yes. the comorbidity. And my colleague will be talking a lot about that. Uh -huh. And um, one of the things we have done to try and advance this course 
as a department of psychology, mm -hmm. we have launched a postgraduate diploma mm -hmm. in addiction treatment science uh -huh, okay. to build capacity of professionals and more people mm -hmm. that want to make a difference in the areas that they are working and they interact with people yes. with their substance use disorders. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I do. I also um, support at a global level mm -hmm. the African chapter of the International Consortium mm -hmm for drug demand reduction. Yes. Our business as universities in ICUDDR, as we call ourselves, mm -hmm. is to build capacity mm -hmm. to help people support prevention of substance use, yes. um, treatment and recovery support, mm -hmm. and that whole continuum. Yes. And therefore, part of why we are here for this um, Mental Health Awareness Month and Week yes. is to bring an awareness to our communities mm -hmm. of the link between mental illness yes. and substance and use substance disorders use and disorders. how they coexist and uh -huh. how we need to intervene for both simultaneously. Yes. That's a little about myself. Thank right. you. Right. I, I like, I, one of the reasons why I like um, interviewing a lecturer is because they, they put things very simply. You are learning, you know, so I feel like I am already gathering information and I like that that we have started with uh, um, actually dem uh, demarcating where is the line between psychology and psychiatrists and I know Dr. Ongecha is going to be taking us to the psychiatry side mm -hmm. so we might as well jump into that. Uh. Um, Doc, just to say hello and tell us what you, your speciality is in. Mm -hmm. Uh, good morning, viewers, and good morning, uh, Blessing, good for morning this morning. Yeah. Yes. The name Blessing already is a positive one for Thank us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm Dr. Francisca Ungecha yes. and I am a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and uh, the, a lecturer at the Department of Psychiatry and uh -huh. Mental Health yes. here at Kenyatta University. Uh -huh. Yes. Amazing. Um, uh -huh. I'm also an addiction medicine uh -huh. specialist uh -huh. and uh, having spent uh, quite a bit of time in uh, treatment uh, services yes. both within and outside mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. So people ask what is a psychiatrist and by the way it's very good to ask that because people don't want to come when they hear the psychiatrist they yes. disappear. Yeah. Uh, many of them are sent by my colleague here yes. and uh, the whole specialty group yes. but then ask me Dr. have you seen uh, I sent you a client blah 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 said no I have not they seen haven't that. even called me yes yeah so they disappear because of that but mm -hmm. we don't want them to disappear psychiatry yes. is a specialty in medicine mm -hmm. just like gynecology yes. surgery <gasps> pediatrics when you are seeing your pediatrician yes. yes so it's a specialty one yes. of those specialties yes. in medicine mm -hmm. yeah and therefore what do we do in psychiatry what we do mm -hmm. is very simple mm -hmm. we manage those conditions patients with those diseases mm -hmm. that affect mind mm -hmm. behavior yes okay. and there are several types and i know we'll get into that yes yeah so when things become abnormal mm -hmm. then they are a disease yes yeah so it is at that point yes. that we now Work manage. on the management. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. We do, we also deal with prevention of that. Mm -hmm. We deal with treatments, mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. and rehabilitation yes. of patients with mental, what we now refer to mental disorders, mm -hmm. diseases of the mind and behavior. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Mm. So um, I'd like to, to say at this point, for us to destigmatize mm. the, the whole um, conversation around mental health, mm. just like you have malaria, it's, it's not... It's not a problem. Like, mm. it is a problem, but it can be sorted. Yeah. So I'd like people to understand that also mental health and mental health disorders mm. and substance abuse can also be actually taken care of. They can yes. be managed. They can be treated. And that is why we have um, professionals with us here. Mm. Just to tell you, no, these things happen. Just like you'd have a flu. Mm. So you can have a flu, get treatment, and the flu is gone, all right? Mm. So I want us to jump right in. What is mental health? What is meant by mental health, Dr. Mm. Ongecha? Mental health illness and disorders and substance disorders. Because I feel like that's a lot of terminologies that mm. are in there. Okay. So just kindly break it down for us. What is meant Absolutely. by mental health, um, mental health illness and disorders, and substance disorders? Okay. Yes. So I want us to talk about mental health, and I want even you mm -hmm. to be very keen, and our, yes. and our viewers and listeners to be keen, yes. because I want us to be able to evaluate ourselves. Remember, we just talked about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. I want us to be able to evaluate ourselves mm -hmm. after the definition of mental health yes. before we get to the others. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what is mental health? Mm -hmm. Mental health is a set of well-being. Mm -hmm. Well-being, yeah? Yes. Where you are able to cope mm -hmm. with the daily stresses of life, mm -hmm you are able to be productive mm -hmm. and you are able to reach your full 
potential. Yes. Yeah. So we expect you to be able to be productive yes. and be able to offer something to your community or society. Mm -hmm. So that is the definition. Yes. So we can take a minute. Exactly. Yeah. Am I you able? said well-being. Exactly. State of well-being. Yes. Well-being here is social, spiritual, mm -hmm. mental, exactly. and physical. Yes. Yes. And then we are talking about you being able to cope with daily stresses of life. Things exactly. like when I was coming here and of course you get traffic and I'm like, I'm getting late. Exactly. What happens to me? Yes. Do I start honking? Yes. <laughs> At or making noise, or, or already, you know, uh, yes. uh, mentioning some things in my car about the traffic mm -hmm. policeman who is stopping us, you know. Yes. Yeah. Am, am I able are to cope? Are you able to cope with daily stresses? Because those are daily stress. stresses. And daily stress yeah. will always be there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've so just taken the simplest because these many people had this morning. Yes. You know, you know the matter who is stopping to True. pick everybody and yes. you are late and it doesn't... Mm, it's taking longer. Yes. That is coping with daily stresses yes. of life. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then being to be able to reach your full potential. Mm -hmm. Where you are working, whether it's in the farm, whether it's in school, yes. whether you are in an office, mm -hmm. eh? whether you are, whatever you are, yes. is it your full potential? Mm -hmm. Or there are things that are making you do something that is not really yes. the best for the day? Exactly. Yeah? And yes. then finally, are you contributing to your society? Exactly. Yeah. Because you are a part of a society. Yes. There is an expectation for you to contribute. Yes. I mean, we are contributing to the mental health conversation by being here, yes. by having this conversation, by yes. creating this awareness. Yes. Okay, so you need to be contributing. You cannot just be a bug in society. No. Yes. You should be able to contribute. And therefore, mm -hmm. from that, mm -hmm. we now move to mental illness or mental disorder yes what is mental so illness what is or mental, mental illness or what is mental disorder actually these names are synonymous mm -hmm. sometimes you can say psychiatric disorder mm -hmm. yeah so it can be mental illness yeah. mental disorder or, or psychiatric, psychiatric disorder. disorder the names can be used interchangeably yes so mental disorder mm -hmm. is when now we have a uh, inability for you mm -hmm. to be able to function yes. normally mm -hmm. why because you could be having a problem with um, uh, regulating your emotions, mm -hmm. you could be having a problem with thinking, or you could be having a problem with behavior. Yeah. And then this mental Ill disorder could be, I mean, it's because you are either having the problem mm -hmm. or the society mm -hmm. that in which you are living in is having a problem because of your behavior. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So it is not just you. Yes. And remember why I'm saying that it's not just you, yeah. because even in the definition of the mental health, we said contributing to your to society. society. Uh -huh. So you can be having a behavior yes. that is also affecting your, your contribution society. to society. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or even just affecting the society. The society yeah. directly. Yeah. Okay. The behavior that you are exhibiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because some so, people will be like, no, I don't have a problem with this. Yeah. So why do you have a problem blessing? Yes. Yeah. Why do you have a problem with me? I don't have a problem with it. Yes. But you can see where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. You are affecting the society okay. therefore it becomes a problem, a problem. okay yes. mm -hmm. yeah so that is that is mental health and then mental um illness. mental illness or yeah. mental um health disorder and then the last one is on substance use disorder i haven't finished yes now when this happens uh -huh. then you are not able to function function normally yes so there'll be a problem with either the way you relate with people social yes. life uh -huh. it affects your social life it affects your emotional life. Mm -hmm. It affects your occupational and psychological life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it affects any of those yes. domains uh -huh. of your life, then you are suffering from a mental disorder. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So finally, you okay. asked me about substance use. Yes. Yeah. Substance use disorders. I think that the easiest way, the first statement that should be mm -hmm. that we are talking about is that you are not in control mm -hmm. of your use of substance. Yes. That is one. You're not in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as you have impaired control of your use of substance, mm -hmm. then now many other things will fall. Exactly. Yeah. So I, sometimes I start starting just from there. Yes. Impaired uh, control. Sub yes. Yes. So you are not in control. You are not in control of your substance use. Yes. Yeah. Because anybody who is in control mm -hmm. will know that when I take this, you know, uh, sometimes we speak about alcohol and people, even the ones who in vibe, mm -hmm. we start feeling that way. So you take your first uh, bottle, yes, or your first tot, yes, and uh, or your first glass of wine. You know, I just take wine, yes, yeah, and uh, they feel I'm now relaxed, yes, yeah. Then they take the second one. They start saying, I'm, I'm feeling now lightheadedness, yeah. but they continue, yes. 
Until now, they start staggering. Or they say, now they start seeing things differently. Exactly. Yeah? Or they become philosophical. Yes. Now, knowledge <laughs> becomes too much. <laughs> so, one should be able to know. Yeah? Yes. I mean, you are why were you taking your alcohol? Just to relax. Yes. So, the moment but you relax, you should moved, be okay. You've moved so yeah. far away from yes. relaxing. From relaxing. <laughs> so, the moment you have impaired control, you have people who are very disciplined. They just take their one glass and one touch. And that's it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, so the moment you start having impaired, impaired control, control then over your problem. substance uptake, yes, there is a problem. Is a problem. Yes. And therefore, we'll have different types of yes. problems now. Yes. So you can have substance abuse mm -hmm. where you are taking it and it's causing you problems. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. causing you problems. Uh -huh. You are aware? Several that problems. It, yes. Yeah, maybe do your relations in the house. Yes. You are going to miss managing your responsibilities. Yes. Coming to work like now, if I was as serious in Bible, I wouldn't be here. Yes. I'll be you calling you <laughs> the way I've had I have an accident, yes. I can't make it, you know? <laughs> absentism. And therefore, there's absentism, there's what? Remember productivity in the society? Yes, in the society. And my full potential. Exactly. I'll not get any promotion because there's no time exactly. that my employer will see me mm. doing yes. what I'm supposed to do. Then there will be substance dependence, mm -hmm. where now mm -hmm. the control is now beyond you, mm -hmm. yeah? It's not that you can just say that I can stop. Now yes. it is actually we say no. It's a, it's the alcohol. It's the drug or the substance that is asking you yes. kindly take me. Yes. <laughs> kindly take me. No, the power and if you is don't take the me, substance. If yeah. you don't take me, you shall not make it. Yes. You cannot write. You can't just <sighs> think. Yes. Yeah. Anybody who talks to you is just <sighs> outbursts. Yes. Yeah. Or you'll just be sleeping there. Yeah, so depending on the substance, we talk about withdrawal symptoms. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, uh -huh. you can have those that happen when you are intoxicated. Uh -huh. when, you are, when you are very drunk, you've seen people yes. drunk and disorderly, just the easiest one that the police will pick you. Yes. Yeah, that's and intoxication. And then, of course, the other elements to your body exactly. can cause some problems in the body, some yes. acute pancreatitis, mm -hmm. some inflammation of the pancreas yes. yeah, because of that and all that. Yes. yes. And of course, sometimes people get into what they call blackout. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. They, and you are... Go off. And uh, finally, yeah. withdrawal symptoms, uh -huh. which make people now go back to drink yes. so that they are stable mm -hmm. or to take the substance so yes. that they are stable. So they are, they are back to stability yes. for yeah. a while. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there are those yes. that will be that will lead to some medical condition. conditions. Yes. All right. I love, I'm loving the breakdown. I hope that you guys at home are learning. Now, th this is not a one night. It's not mm -hmm. an overnight mm -hmm. thing that mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. We, it starts very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. like, like Doc has put it there very clearly. It starts mm -hmm. with you, just one glass of wine, then mm -hmm. it moves to, you know, on the extreme or you are actually suffering from now a physical disease mm -hmm. from something that was mental to begin with. All right, I, I hope that you're learning because I'm picking a lot. Um, we want to move on and I want to talk to uh, Dr. Beatrice for a while. Uh, for a minute, just on the general um, uh, factors associated mm -hmm. with mental health. What mm -hmm. are these general um, factors that are associated with mental health? Thank you very much, Blessing. Yes. And, um, I want to say something about what my colleague said. Because yes. we know alcohol is a legal drug. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to know when you have a problem. Exactly. Because you, after all, you hang out with your friends. Yes. Mm -hmm. But here is the catch. Mm -hmm. You hang out with your friends and take alcohol. Mm -hmm. They go back to work. Yes. They go back to their family obligations. Yes. They go back to being productive. But you struggle. You don't. Or you struggle. That tells you there is a problem. Yes. Ah. Now, the, we have many factors that could be related to this. Yes. And I'm going to summarize them into what I call four Ps. Mm -hmm. Four Ps. Yes, so that you can this remember. This is the time for your notebook, Four so the first P yes. is what we call predisposing factors. Mm -hmm. Now, predisposing factors, uh -huh. just like the name suggests, yes. is the factors that make you vulnerable, uh -huh. that make you susceptible mm -hmm. to developing the mental, the mental uh, illness yes. or the substance use disorders. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, you and me yeah. can begin drinking as young people together yes. and you continue functioning all the way yes. and you never have a problem. Yes. But I yeah. quickly begin having a problem. Mm -hmm. The reason could be that I have predisposing factors, factors. that you don't have. Okay. Now, uh -huh. what are some of these predisposing factors? Mm -hmm. Some are actually genetic. Yes. Ooh. The way we are genetically made yes. creates some biological differences uh -huh. in us in and us. even the way our brain works. Yes. Sometimes we have what we call chemicals that operate in the brain. Yes. Sometimes they are called chemical messengers yes. or neurotransmitters. Yes. 
the way our brains release them or our central nervous system releases mm -hmm. them is yes. different for it's us. It's not the same for So everyone. some of us are predisposed yes. in different ways. She likes making a joke about me and telling me that she thinks that I have a lot of dopamine. Dopamine is one of the neurotransmitters yes. that, that elevates your mood. Yes. So she says that she thinks I have a lot of it because I work can work many, many hours, yes. you know. Now, these biological differences then can mean that I am predisposed towards developing an, a, a disorder yes. much more than she is than or much more than you are. Exactly. And therefore, uh -huh. being able to understand that. And one of the ways we look at predispositions mm -hmm. is to actually look at our family lineage. Mm -hmm. Even when we do history, when we are doing assessment yeah. of patients, and when they are doing assessment of patients, we ask for family history. Okay. And we look at the patterns in mm -hmm. the family. Yes. Just like we say with diabetes. Yes. The doctor asks you, is there someone with diabetes in, in your, your family? family? Is there someone with hypertension? Yes. So we must understand mm -hmm. that sometimes some of us have a predisposition to mental disorders mm -hmm. and substance use disorders. Yes. So one of them is genetics, it's the genetic biological makeup. Eh? Okay. The other one uh -huh. is what we call adverse childhood experiences uh -huh. or ACE. Uh -huh. Advanced Advanced childhood, childhood or experience. negative childhood experiences yes. is experiences that you have in your early life, mm -hmm. probably first five years, yes. that are extremely detrimental to you. Yes. For example, children who experience trauma. Yes. And there can be many types of trauma. You yes. can have acute trauma when there is a sudden yes. event. For example, you have an event in school like we are having in the U.S. of a shooting. Yes. That's a traumatic, acute Experience. traumatic event. True. We can have what we call chronic mm -hmm. traumatic events. Mm -hmm. These ones happen over a prolonged period. period and that's time. what happened with COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID traumatized us over, over a prolonged a period, period of, time. of time. True. Then we can have what we call complex trauma. Mm -hmm. Complex trauma is chronic and it is actually um, caused by someone mm -hmm. that is close to you, who is supposed to be your caregiver, yes. and happens the first three years of life. Okay. So if you're a child yeah. and you're getting abused by your caretaker, which yes. is happening, yes. whether it is All physical abuse, yes. sexual abuse, emotional, emotional abuse, abuse those are negative childhood experiences. Yes. And there's a way they alter the brain mm -hmm. and they can actually predispose you to these conditions. Yes that she has talked about. Yes. Other times it's the environment you live in, mm -hmm. a toxic environment. Yeah. Some of us grow up in environments where our families are brewing uh, alcohol. alcohol. People right come in home. to take it there. Yes. Some of them are sexually harassing you as they come in. Yes. So that the toxicity of the environment mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. that you grow up yes. can also be a predisposing factor. factor. So okay. that is pre predisposing, predisposing the first factors. P. Exactly. Second P? The second P. Yes. Now we know uh -huh. that just because you're predisposed to diabetes yes. by your genetic makeup yeah. does not mean you will develop diabetes. True. Just because you're predisposed to asthma doesn't mean you will develop asthma yes. and all these other you know, chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. So there will be a factor that will need to activate that predisposition exactly. Exactly. for it to become a reality. Yes. Now that factor is what we call mm -hmm. precipitating factor. Precipitating yes. factor. Yes, to precipitate okay. means to trigger. Yes. To trigger. Yes. So okay. we can all remain predisposed, yes. but we right. never develop mental disorders, we never develop substance use disorders, yes. because we never yes. bring in the trigger. Uh -huh. And that's the part I like about the way we were made. Yes. That just because I'm predisposed that's doesn't make me doesn't make me helpless, exactly. not at all. Yes. We have got the triggers, uh -huh. and the triggers are the precipitators. Uh -huh. Now some of these precipitators uh -huh. could actually be the experience of an acute crisis. Yeah. So for example, you have been functioning very well. Yeah. Suddenly, you get a traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it happens with young people here yeah. in the university. Yeah. Maybe someone gets raped yeah. out there. Yeah. Now that's a traumatic experience. That now mm -hmm. can be a trigger yes. to a mental disorder or a substance use disorder to someone who is predisposed. So that is a trigger. Yeah. High school students go to school. Yeah. You get bullied. Yes. We have heard about kids who really get bullied. Yes. That bullying can become the trigger. Yes. The precipitating factor. factor. Okay. Loss. Yes. You lose a loved person that's yes. very close to you. That in itself mm -hmm. can become a, precipitate. a precipitating factor. Okay. So that is precipitating factors. factors. Okay. So that is the second P. Yes. We are moving on, we are moving on well. We are learning things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the third P. Yes. Now, just because an acute event has happened. Yes. For example, many people get um, the experience of an acute event. Mm -hmm. 
for example, like even in that shooting of, of our children in a, in a school yeah. or an accident, a car accident, you know. Mm -hmm. So we can all experience an acute event. Yeah. But some of us will go on to recover fully, True. but others will not. And yes. they will end up with substance use disorders and mental illness. Reason yeah. being, the third factor. Mm -hmm. It is called perpetuating factors. Perpetuating factors. Perpetuating factors oh. comes from the word perpetuate. Yes. And if I was to model what perpetuate is, it would yes. be like this. Yes. Uh, right? Yes. Like this. So the, the trigger starts, yes. but the problem doesn't end there because something else comes to aggravate. Exactly. So that Keeps aggravator, aggravating the situation. Yes. So okay. that yes. is, is the perpetuating, perpetuating factor. factor. And that therein lies the biggest problems. Yes. Now, perpetuating factors mm -hmm. could be what kind of environment are you in? And I want to give you an example mm -hmm. of uh, abuse. Yes. When you have been sexually abused, for example, mm -hmm. and you go to report yeah. to your family, and you go to report to your institution, and yes. you go to, what kind of reactions do you get? Mm -hmm. True. You can start being blamed and told, you know what? We always tell you about dressing that way. Exactly. We always tell you about staying out late. We always, so those now become what? Aggravating factors. factors so instead okay. of helping you recover, yes. They, they now it's like adding making we say adding salt to what to, to, to a wound to a wound yes yes uh, yeah adding insult to injury yes so that is what perpetuating factors are mm -hmm. general life stressors exactly you know sometimes we say you can experience multiple stressors yeah so you got raped then your husband decides to divorce you yeah. and now your family is against you because of that now yeah. those are just aggravating exactly and they will just lead you to what Mental, Sub disorders mental disorders and substance, substance use, use disorders. disorders. Okay. Uh -huh. Now we have the fourth factor, yes. which is the most important uh -huh. for me. Yes. Because therein lies mm -hmm. the solution. Uh -huh. okay. We call them protective factors. Factors. Okay. Protective. A protective factor, yes. just like the name suggests, yes. is anything now that will put a stop to that channel. Yes. It will put a stop to the predisposition becoming a reality. Yes. It will put a stop to the trigger yes. continuing to a disease. Exactly. It will put a stop to the perpetuating Tweet. factors. Yes. And that is what we need to focus on. Okay. Because we yes. may never be able to change predisposing factors. Uh -huh. We may not even be able to remove precipitators. Exactly. Because they are life occurrences. Yes. We might not even be able to do away with perpetuators because everyday stresses exactly. are there. Uh -huh. But there's a lot we can do with the fourth P, uh -huh. which is the protective factors. Exactly. And that is why we are here today. Yes. We are here today yes. to build protective factors. We are here today uh -huh. to educate ourselves and our people yes. and to tell them there is something you can do yes part of uh, protective factors is building resilience yes you know there's something today before yeah. we used to think of iq only yes oh, uh, high oh. iq yes high but do you IQ. know that research has shown yes people with high iq yes do not have successful outcomes in life yeah because there are other types of intelligences yes, what exactly. we call multiple intelligences yes and one of those intelligences mm -hmm. is socio-emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. How much aware am I of my emotions? Exactly. That's why we began by telling you, are we, we are morning owls, we are night owls, we are yes. what? That's yes. part of emotional intelligence. Intelligence. Now, there is also something called adversity quotient. Mm -hmm. This is a type of intelligence mm -hmm. based on your ability to bounce back yes. from negative uh, life experiences. Yes. We all got COVID. We all lose loved ones. Yes. We all experience negative life events. How quickly do we bounce back? We, okay. That adversity quotient yes. is something we need to learn to build. Uh -huh. And that's what we are calling building resilience. And how yes. do we do that? Yes. We can begin to think of how, for example, mm -hmm. if your self-esteem is high, you tend to bounce back faster yes. from negative experiences. True. So how do we have programs to build self-esteem? Yes. There's something we call self-efficacy or self-belief. Yes. Self-belief mm -hmm. is where you think and believe that you're in charge of events. You yes. can make things happen. As opposed to you're at the mercy things of external factors. To you. Okay. So yes. we want to build self-efficacy. Efficacy. We want to build something we call internal lockers of control. Yes. So that I'm not sitting waiting. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I failed the exam. There's nothing I could have done. You know that lecturer. Exactly. You know that course. Yes. You blame everyone else except, except from looking you. inside. Yes. So we want to build a strong internal lockers of control mm -hmm. so that you can believe that you can make a difference. Exactly. We want to build assertiveness uh -huh. skills. We are. Assertiveness skills yeah. are so important because I know you have lately seen mm -hmm. how people are killing each other in relationships. Yes. One of the reasons is because of lack of assertiveness. Yes. You saw things are not right, but you're and not able to say no to and stand. I am walking away. Exactly. You're not able to do that. Yeah. You're passive in a relationship. So you become a victim. Yes. And I tell people, if you want to know whether your relationship is good, mm -hmm. ask yourself, 
Is it symbiotic? Yes. Are you giving and taking? Oh, or okay. is it one way? Yes. One way is parasitic. Yes. In biology, you learned about parasites. Parasites, yes. true. And one of the animals that's a parasite yes. is the tick. Yes. It lays on the host, which yes. is the cow. Yes. And it takes the blood from the cow, and so the cow finally drops dead. dead. Some of us are the cow in the relationship. Yeah. Others are the tick. We yes. need to become aware. Yes. So assertiveness is about realizing mm -hmm. that, you know what? Here, I am becoming the cow. Exactly. And I need to say no. Yes. The other end is aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. Some of us are aggressive in relationships. Mm -hmm. So we are the tick. Yes. We are busy preying on our, our partners cows, unknowingly, exactly. unknowingly. And we are choking them to death unknowingly. Yes. In the process, we end up with dysfunctional relationships, mm -hmm. which can then be a trigger, exactly. can be a precipitator, can be a perpetuator. Yes. The other important thing we want to do as part of protective factors uh -huh. is building self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I'm sure by now you're already beginning to understand the value of self-awareness exactly. and yes. self-monitoring. Yes. I must be able to ask, by the way, how am I feeling today? Yeah. And you know, if I ask you how you're feeling today, you might struggle picking the emotion. Oh, yeah. Is it anger? Is it happy? Is it joy? Yes. Is it excited? Is it moody? Is it so emotions mm -hmm. and understanding them and labeling them yes. is very key. And yet, you know, we say that men are not supposed to feel. Yeah. That's what we say in Africa. That They're supposed to look like they have no feelings, exactly, all right? Yes. That's not going to help in terms of building protective factors. Protective so we must factors. become aware of what am I thinking? She said that mental illness is about disorders of thinking, feeling, feeling and behaving. And behavior. So True. by monitoring our feelings, yes. monitoring our thoughts, and monitoring our behavior, we can actually build resilience yes. against mental Against health mental uh, and mental illnesses yes. and substance use, and substance disorders. use disorders yes. absolutely yes the other thing is about coping mm -hmm. strategies mm -hmm. for example when i lose a loved one mm -hmm. what coping strategies do i have when i face stress what, what coping? tangible coping strategies yes. do we have yes we need programs to build these coping strategies mm -hmm. we need people to know that when you have stress it's not harmful as stress. In yeah. fact, there's something we call eustress, EU, yeah. eustress. Yeah. Eustress is functional stress. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have eustress, we wouldn't be here today. Oh, We'd yeah. be in bed and saying, ah, it's not so serious anyway. Exactly. So a little stress, functional, yes. helps us to be motivated. Yes. But when it becomes too much, then you get into distress. Yes. And that is the stress that is harmful. So we need to help people have coping mechanisms, mechanisms. when there is stress. And uh -huh. finally, mm -hmm. we need to create what I call a therapeutic environment. Mm -hmm. A therapeutic environment in our homes. A therapeutic environment in KU, and that's what we are working on now exactly. in this Mental Health Awareness Month. Yes. How can we build a therapeutic environment mm -hmm. where, for example, our community knows yes. if I'm struggling with a precipitating factor, yes. I can reach out for help. Exactly. If I am struggling with a perpetuating factor, I, I can, can reach, reach for, help. for help. So we want people to understand that we want to build what is called recovery capital. Mm -hmm. You know, when oh. we say capital, we only think about capital yes. in investment. In investment now, I want cash. to say very quickly <laughs> yes. about recovery capital. Uh -huh. Recovery capital is all the resources an individual has mm -hmm. at their disposal to help them manage these difficult life conditions yeah. so that they don't get into mental illness. Illnesses. And if they do, yes. not severe, we can stop it. Yes. All right? Okay. And so some of the things can be personal. We mm -hmm. call that personal recovery capital. Mm -hmm. And the things I've been talking about here, like assertiveness, mm -hmm. self-esteem, those are personal recovery capital. Exactly. But we also have family and social. Mm -hmm. Family support is so key in mm -hmm. terms of building resilience yes. and a protective measure. Mm -hmm. And some people don't have family. Yes. And we say in the world of mental health and substance use disorders, family is not necessarily your biological people. Yes. It is anybody that cares. So if you don't have a supportive family, mm -hmm. can you look out in the society, maybe in the church? Yes. Maybe there's a neighborhood group. Yes. There's always a social, a social mechanism that you can build exactly. into uh -huh. that can be a social capital. Yes. The third is what we call community recovery capital. And mm -hmm. this is where I speak to government. Yes. And I speak to our policy makers. E exactly. Do we have within our community mm -hmm. places people can run to? Yeah. Do we have within our community wellness centers? Mm -hmm. Do we have wellness clinics? Do we have helplines that I can call and get supported? Yes. That is community recovery capital. Do we have hospitals? Mm -hmm. She'll be telling you that we have very few psychiatrists in this country, yeah. psychiatrist hospitals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've tried to check in a patient in a psychiatrist hospital and they are full. Yeah. The, 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 the medical, I mean, the public one is full and they exactly. can't afford private. Exactly. So this community recovery capital, our government, our mm -hmm. policymakers must come in and address. And it finally, mm -hmm. we have what we call cultural recovery capital. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, substance use disorders have a lot to do with our culture. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. You go to cultures where mm -hmm. certain drugs are yes. 
accepted, appreciated, yes. and almost glorified. Yes. We bring up our children in those cultures. Yes. We socialize them to see those things are good. Yes. They are normal. Mm -hmm. They are fine. So when they have stressful life conditions, how do they cope? They take, the they take the substance. If they have a predisposition, they end up with a substance use disorder. Yes. So those are the things those are the that things. we are thinking about. I hope that you, that you guys are taking notes because I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much here. Um, to start with, you know, we start from prevention if we can be able to pre to prevent if mm. we can be able to cure before we get to severe mm. you know we are trying to if we can you know come back take steps back and actually keep this from happening mm -hmm. it would be a much like they said prevention is better than better cure than and cure. so we're having this conversation so that you mm. can know mm. the predisposing the um uh, precipitating the precipitating, pa precipitating mm. the perpetuating, perpetuating so that you can mm. be able to put a stop to it even before so it goes to the severe side mm. wow there is something that um was happening here at Kenyatta University mm -hmm. and we were comparing mental health um, mental health disorders and substance use disorders as um, uh, Siamese twins and I just wanted um, uh, Dr. Ongecha to explain, to expound on mm -hmm. that just a little bit mm -hmm. so we can be able to understand because there is a, it's like they are almost intertwined and we would like to understand um, that, that relationship, that comparison to a Siamese twins. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. You're Ms. welcome. Thank you very much, Dr. Yazonga. I just wanted to add something yes. the, about the predisposing factors uh -huh. and the precipitating factors. Yes. One of the major uh, predisposing factors uh -huh. is issues of pregnancy and delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oh. I didn't want us to miss that. Yes. Because okay. when uh, people are told, when the mothers are told that when you are expected, kindly go for the clinic. Yes. And make sure you deliver in a um, health facility. A lot of uh, care mm -hmm. during that period is very paramount yes. to mental uh, health yeah. of the of the person. Yes. Yeah. So we, it's, it's one of the major predisposing factors, mm -hmm. and uh, would want to uh, bring it up yes. because that is where it begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. If we lose it, yes. then we will be living with this child exactly. who has these problems yes. and they'll be they'll be uh, discovered yes. in the first year of life the mm -hmm. second year the third year we see a lot of children having difficulties in the first second third year exactly simply because of the care yes. so we would uh, want to in terms of protective factors mm -hmm. encourage the mothers mm -hmm. to go for antenatal care mm -hmm. the moment they discover they are pregnant. They are pregnant. Yes. Okay. That is very important. Then the de delivery. Yes. Also to make sure that they deliver in a skilled facility, that they get skilled, skilled delivery. Yes. Skilled delivery. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we have heard a lot about postpartum um, stress, and I'm mm. thinking mm. the way we were talking about um, predisposing. Mm. The the reason this kid might be having a, an a dysfunctional parents mm. is mostly because they did not take care of their mental health during this prenatal period and postpartum stress and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that I totally agree. That is an important point mm -hmm. because we raise healthy parents, then healthy parents are able to take care of healthy kids, are able to bring up healthy yes. children. Yes. So we sort mm -hmm. the problem like from the root. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Then there's the second aspect of yes. uh, uh, medical conditions yes. yeah, mm -hmm. as precipitants mm -hmm. yeah, and even per perpetuators. Mm -hmm. There are some medical conditions that would predispose you mm -hmm. to mental illnesses. Yes. Several, mm -hmm. several. Mm -hmm. Can be diabetes, can be that hypertension, can be head injury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be infections. Remember, people suffer from malaria. Then subsequently, you hear people talking of cerebral malaria. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Because they actually end up with some consequences mm -hmm. of that malaria. Yes. Yeah. That is now. Uh, uh, on behavior and affecting their cognition. So, exactly. so there's that aspect that we also have to, to remember. To remember that the okay. medical conditions yes. could and be precipitators, to could be predisposing factors, and yes. can also be perpetuators. perpetuators. Yeah. So this, uh -huh. and this is also where uh -huh. now the substance use disorder comes. comes yes. Okay. Yeah. This is where we are calling them Siamese twins, because mm -hmm. having one can lead you to having the other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But but the reason why it's important for us to talk about the Siamese twins because people have always thought that substance use disorder is okay, you've decided to take it, so yes. everything is your own problem. Exactly. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then, mm -hmm. uh, I'd want to tell you that there are two aspects to substance use disorders. Why we talk about a Siamese twins. Could be that you started the substance use and then you develop 
-hmm. mental illness. Mental illness. Or you started with a mental, mental illness, illness that yes. predisposes you yes. to using substance. the substance mm -hmm. as a okay. coping mechanism mm -hmm. yes. or just that the, 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 the disease mm -hmm. makes you uh, in terms of behavior, yeah. get into those risky behaviors of just drinking yes. or using substances without uh -huh. thinking about their consequences. Yes. Yeah. So the the adage uh -huh. is it the chicken yes. or, or the, the egg? egg. Mm. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, what everybody yes. will see and uh -huh. what the relatives come with uh -huh. or the family will complain is mm, Beatrice is taking a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Or Beatrice is smoking cannabis. Uh -huh. And that will be their problem. Yes. But they don't know that probably Beatrice had a problem. Exactly. That she's been living with. Yes. And it's only the substance that she has now started taking. Yes. And they can see her doing this and then the behaviors that are related to the substance. Exactly. For example, mm -hmm. some of the things that we talked about in protective, mm -hmm. building resilience. If you mm -hmm. have low self-esteem, yeah. you are a high school student. Yeah. And when you go to high school, people start uh, having small relationships. Yeah. And you hear you can't can talk to a girl. Yeah. Yeah. You are in class. You heard, you know the answer. Yeah. But in fact, your answer is the best yes. compared to the people who raise up, raise their, up hands. their hands. And you can't say. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly one day, somebody by chance gives you something to test or you say, oh, okay, I hear they say that when you drink, yeah. then things change. Actually, some kids say that they discover that when their father takes alcohol, yes. He becomes very approachable, yes, can now easy. speak, <laughs> easy. So they also now say, mm -hmm, let this, me also this, take this. Yeah, this might make me a little bit more. And actually it happens. Yes. Yeah, so when they take it, then they can now so talk they to a guy. Right. Yeah? Mm. Then now that begins, because now for me to now yes. be able to even do this, yes. I must take a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. But if you have that predisposition, yes. you will continue. You will continue, mm -hmm. and now it will come. It will become an abnormality. Yeah, or it will affect your exactly. social, mm -hmm. occupational, exactly. emotional, and everything of your yes. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so there is that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we say, is it this that started, or who started? Or who started yeah. it? Yeah. Then and that's I where the Siamese twins comes. Yes. Then there is also the bit that uh, you could be having mm -hmm. a mental disorder like mm -hmm. depression. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's one of the mental disorders. You can have yes. depression. Yeah. You can have what we refer to as a bipolar illness. Uh -huh. Yeah. A mental disorder. Mm -hmm. Even schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about them next week. Yeah. Yes. Hope these guys will tune in on yes. Monday exactly. for details about yes, we this. Shall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So so I just wanted to highlight that this uh -huh. you may have these conditions. Mm -hmm. And because they come with uh, feelings of uh, uh, you know, you, you feel good yeah. or you don't have the control mm -hmm. of what is good, what is bad. So when you find this, you will take it. You just take and be, again, yes. you'll find yourself continuing to take. Yes. There are also those who say that when they take that the, the substance, mm -hmm. yeah, like let's say if I was suffering from a condition that I'm hearing voices, yeah. when I take the substance, then of course, when you are drunk or when you are high, yeah. you can't feel those other problems. Exactly. Yeah, so people, yeah. The people who are high, they know. The people who take substances, mm -hmm. they feel so good that even when you make noise around them. Mm -hmm. they, so in that circumstance, they also don't hear yes. those voices that were bothering them, which were, yes. which were symptoms of a mental illness. Exactly. So there are these people who will have mental illnesses mm -hmm. and they develop uh, substance, substance use, use There are those who have... Uh, Again, Sub still, yes. Um, uh, we can talk about abnormal psychology. Mm -hmm. They don't have assertiveness, but then they realize that when they take this, then they, they, are, they are able to do well. So exactly. that's how they get into, yes. into the So drugs. either so can lead to the other to the or other. cause the other. Yes. All right, then I'm and that is now the responsibility yes. of the clinicians now. Yes. To find out, and that's when we pick in the history because you are able to get through understand this, yeah. which cost to which cost what, what because, which cost what yes, and again uh -huh. you are patient the the relatives like now if I'm the one who's sick in the family, it will not be easy for me to tell you that I used to hear voices yes, but when they come for assessment they'll be able to tell us because even if they don't we will ask for them and make them very. Uh, mm -hmm. comfortable and usual that they would be able to speak about it because yes. mm -hmm. that is now the difference in yeah. the assessment. Exactly. Yeah. From just a random assessment from home, mom asking why you're drinking. Yeah, because the question is seeking why. Seeking professional. Mm -hmm. And professional requires a defense health. from you. Anytime yes. you are asked why. Mm -hmm. You require when to the be one who is drinking, everybody yes. here, this alcohol is you here. Jump people to people just take one glass and they go away. You yeah. even come back and clear the mm -hmm. bottle. What's your problem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, mm. so I am. So I, this is bringing me to protective factors, and that's where it's at. Mm. Because when you're able to know exactly what the problem is, you're able to decide the measure. Mm. But just to come back home, because I'm being told our time is almost up, mm. and uh, to go back to what Kenyatta University is doing in addressing these factors mm. to ensure a mentally healthy population. Just in brief, because mm. we are going to be here next week, so we can pick up uh, a few of the what we will have today plus mm. now the conversation for next week. But yes. I'd like you to answer that because we are here speaking for Kenyatta University. Thank you. Thank yes. you much. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Kenyatta University has great support systems yes. for its staff and students, uh -huh. form of wellness department and uh, directorate of university health services mm -hmm. and other support services. Yes. We are a population of over 50,000 exactly. people. Those directorates on their own cannot be able to yes. take care of our needs. And I'm sure by now you know many of us are needy. Yes. <laughs> and so what we have done in mm -hmm. this Mental Health Awareness mm -hmm. Month is to mobilize. Yes all related departments, mm -hmm. psychology, psychiatry, mm -hmm. uh, wellness, directorate of university health services, yeah. accommodation services. And then we've also brought in our partners from outside, mm -hmm. NACADA, yes. director of mental health services, mm -hmm. um, association of prevention and uh, uh, prevention and, and treatment rehabilitation centers of Kenya, yes. international society of substance use uh, prevention and treatment mm -hmm. uh, professionals, counselor, organizations. We're yes. bringing them all on board mm -hmm. so that we can build what I called a therapeutic environment. Yes. A recovery like oriented it. system of care. Exactly. So that we can now be able to have an opportunity to make referral mm -hmm. for people who may require. Yes. The other important thing we are doing, we're mm -hmm. going to be doing outreaches. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, Tuesday mm -hmm. and Wednesday we oh, have yeah. outreach clinics. Uh -huh. We're going to go out of our spaces where we wait for patients yes. to go to, to where they are. Yes. We say there's something called lowering the ladder mm -hmm. for someone to climb. Before I climbed onto this seat, yes. you know you gave me a little something to e step on, exactly, right? Exactly, yes. So you lowered the ladder for me to get here. Yeah, exactly. We want to lower the ladder uh -huh. for the Kenyan person uh -huh. to be able to access services, mm -hmm. whether it's prevention services, yes. promotion of yeah. health, or even uh, treatment, treatment and recovery services. supports. Uh -huh. So those are clinics. Yes. We are also launching support groups mm -hmm. and wellness groups. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so support groups, yes. for those who already have a problem, mm -hmm. you can actually get into those groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. For those who want to build their resilience, mm -hmm. I talked about assertiveness skills, mm -hmm. self-esteem, mm -hmm. problem solving. We're actually going to have wellness groups also yes. being formed. And we're yes. going to be doing that at the Directorate of Health Services and uh -huh. at the Bishop Square. Yes. So we invite people to come and yes. see us. And finally, we are also going to have a big webinar mm -hmm. on 30th, on 30th, which we shall open May. online yes. for even Kenyans and uh -huh. global people to yes. listen. And we're also going to do two outreaches to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. We have a primary school within mm -hmm. KU called Kenyatta University Primary School. Yes. We have a secondary school in our neighborhood mm -hmm. called Kiwanja Secondary School. Yes. So that is what we are doing as Kenyatta University. Yes. And I am just inviting everyone mm -hmm. to be part of this great initiative. As yes. I also tell you, mm -hmm. In your own space, please go and do something. Yes. Go and pass this message. Go and reach out to someone who needs support. Tell them there is care. Exactly. Tell them something can be done. Yes. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for um, uh, honoring us with your time and giving us your time. Um, uh, Dr. Ongecha, I don't know if you have anything to add in very briefly. Yes. Yes. And thank you very much. And I think I want to thank you for this mm -hmm. because we've given a platform for yes. people to know what they needs to be done. Exactly. I only want to say that... Uh, Mental health, mental illness mm -hmm. is our all responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Because remember, there's individual and the society. And society. When you leave this individual yes. who is mentally ill, mm -hmm. you are also affected as a society. Yeah. So that is all I want to put across that exactly. it is our whole responsibility. Yes. Yes. You remember and everybody we has something to do and something to contribute. E exactly. To. When you. we were talking about COVID during COVID times, mm -hmm. we stressed mm -hmm. a lot on individual responsibility, mm -hmm. then society responsibility, mm -hmm. government responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it is it is the responsibility of each and every one of us. Before mm -hmm. we call to government, we are going to, Dr. Beatrice has just called mm -hmm. to government, mm -hmm. but also it comes down <laughs> to mm -hmm. what is Kenyatta University doing? And mm -hmm. I think at this juncture, I'd like mm -hmm. to um, uh, give a big congratulations to Kenyatta University. Yes. I do really think we are very good at networking. Yes. We are very good at reaching out to the branches of people we think can help mm -hmm. and bringing those services here mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. So one, if you're within Kenyatta University, you have no excuse. You have By the end of the 30th of May, this month, you should be a pro in matters of mental health. You should, have, you should know where to seek help, how to help another person. Mm -hmm. And if you are, you know, within, without the borders of Kenyatta University, the webinar will be there. Yes. And I believe you're always doing outreaches. Time and time again, there yes. are always outreaches. So if you keep your ears open, if you keep it KUTV Kenya, we are always sharing what is happening. So keep it KUTV Kenya. Also keep it Kenyatta University. I'm sure our online handles are 
are also very active. So go to um, to Twitter, to our website, and you can be able to get all this information of everything that's happening. Yes, Dr. One Beatrice. more thing, Blessing. Yes. We have another three talk shows. Yes. One tomorrow. Yes. One next Monday. Exactly. And also next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Please so yes. In. So please join us again to um, mm. next week. We are going to finish up. We are going to be talking on one again more on what Kenyatta University is doing. Then we are going to be talking about actually mental health disorders. What are they? What do they look mm. like? Mm. Um, Richard Okenya is going to be here this morning. Um, next tomorrow morning, Richard Okenya is going to be there having this conversation. So if you can stick around, I mm. can promise that you're going to be learning much more than you have today. So today we might be um, out of time, Absolutely. but we are going to be having them here next Tuesday, mm. next Monday, and the other Tuesday mm. next week. All right. Um, I think you, in case you have anything to say and buy, this would be your opportunity. Thank you, KU TV, yes. for making it happen. You're most welcome. I want every person. Yes. everywhere to realize that mental health is our challenge it is our priority exactly thank you wow thank you thank you so much for joining us dr ngecha i only want to mention substance substance use disorders and mental illness are siamese twins yes yes and it's not a weakness on anybody uh -huh. it is a condition a disease that would require the same yes. uh, impact that it requires when you have diabetes, exactly. malaria, TB. Yes. yes. So Thank these you. things are, we are here to offer help. Like, just like you would be physically ill and you're sorting for help. Thank you very much. I'm definitely looking forward to next Monday because the lessons I'm learning, this, this is a whole course. But you should have brought certificates. <laughs> Karen participated. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm leaving you with um, the Ethiopian um, uh, people, the Ethiopian people who are fattening people for contests that is the con that is the feature i want to leave you with but when we come back we're going to be having our last conversation of the day even as we work towards the top of the hour and to close the show so stick around to KUTV kenya it's an honor and a pleasure and i'm also going to be getting to your comments so leave them if you have not kimbia pale youtube KUTV kenya or on our social uh, on our whatsapp or sms line on 0739 110544 i'm going to be getting to those in just a bit <laughs>